guess I don't need my earplugs anymore or my safety glasses. My goodness. So that actually took about five and a half hours. And what the heck is it, you might ask? Well, I am building a vacuum bed for my CNC coil winder. That brown stuff right there is actually sticky, burnt glue, whatever is holding together the MDF. It's actually a sticky, burnt substance. Pretty nasty. Anyway, using the RWG OSD CNC laser and also coil winder. Building some parts. Well, let me get this vacuumed up real quick and I'll explain to you what the heck I'm doing. Look at this mess. The vacuum uh, thing actually started falling apart because this thing has just been running for five and a half hours. I broke one drill bit and then broke two more right after that trying to drill the same hole. One of the holes went at an angle. And uh, yeah, the first drill bit didn't get burnt like this, which is what these holes are. That side, well, yeah, as you can see, the little burnt shavings flying out of the flutes on the drill bit. Anyway, let me vacuum this up and I'll explain just a little bit more about what I'm doing. Alright, let's have a little bit closer look. I drilled 800 holes in this piece of wood. Now, the bottom is actually the, uh, or the top here, what you see is actually the bottom of the piece. I wanted to drill into another piece of wood so that the hole was pretty well perfectly uh, straight through without having any of this uh, problem that I see here. It's got some sticking up, some, some wood that pulled up when it started to drill. I want this to be perfectly flat. I'm going to be using these holes as a suction to hold down the tape that I'm using for the coil winder. So hopefully, if everything went correct, and everything went well here, then we should have a somewhat halfway decent top, and all the holes should be drilled through. Yep, and they are. Now I had smaller hole size here, and a slightly larger hole size here. Some of them kind of got pushed through. Um, and unfortunately, that's just what I'm going to have to deal with. I can always make another one of these. This thing doesn't even look like it's in the center, so you know. That's not great, but yeah, 800 holes in that guy. Can you see through them? Oh, you can see through them. So, uh, yeah, the bottom wood was just to hold uh, everything uh, in place whenever the bottom drilled through so it didn't blow any of the holes out. Looks like it's pretty good. Um, not bad at all. So let's clean this thing up and see what we got. Just using a razor blade and scraping the surfaces. I should probably go outside though, it's like really dirty. Alright, got that cleaned up and as you can see all the holes are pretty well drilled all the way through. There isn't any of them that I could just see that weren't drilled through so there might be a little bit of junk in a few of them here or there. But uh, all of them seem to be drilled and that's a good thing. So the reason that this board kind of didn't drill very well anyway. Two things. One, the drill bit wasn't perfectly in the center, so when it started, if it went off to the side, it actually really messed things up. And secondly, this was actually the bottom of a CNC, a couple of CNC cuts. And when the bit hit the edge of these little, whatever, these uh, little cuts, it wanted to go left, right, and it didn't want to stay in the center. Uh, I do wish I had the same hole size everywhere. I have actually a bigger hole here and a smaller hole over here, but Hey, it is what it is. The top looks really good, looks really clean, it's really bright, but uh, yeah, so now we got to build the rest of this thing. Now I'll show you what it does. It's going to hold my tape down though, so I'm, I'm relying on the uh, A-frame, or this frame here, to uh, hold the tape for my coil winder, and it just, the wheel on the coil winder wants to pull it up, really has problems. Um, I'm worried about the hole diameter here. That's why I started off with such a small hole here uh, less than one millimeter This is about 1.1 millimeter the bigger holes and there's 800 of them 40 by 40 
So that's 800 holes. That is a lot of holes. It doesn't really look like that many. It's basically a reverse air hockey table. Instead of blowing air out, we're going to suck air in. And we're going to suck the bottom of my tape on here. For all I know, I may not even need this frame. I will be testing that. We'll find out. But right now, I was going to see and see the bottom, so it had an air cavity in there. But then I decided I'd just rather glue a piece of wood around the outside of here and glue a frame on the bottom and put the uh, the same vacuum that's on the machine for the CNC is going to be the vacuum to hold it down. So I already have the vacuum. That all, if you haven't seen that, that all is actually powered from the uh, server power supply that I'm running the whole entire duet board with. It's actually powered. Uh, the CNC and the vacuum and the printer are all powered off this one little bitty brick power supply. Thanks to the one man, you know who you are, for sending that to me. Okay, well, let's go on to the next phase. So I took the drill bit out. You can see the top of the drill bit, that line there, that's not from heat, so to speak. That's actually from the gooey, sticky crap that apparently the board is being held with. You can see, or probably not because I moved my hands now, but there's some really hard wood stuck in the flutes there. And that is actually what, uh, that's the reason it looks like it's burnt like crazy. But hey. It made it, it survived, so, so be it. Building the box and the air vacuum section. Okay, so here is the plate. Doesn't look so bad. Um, what I did to it is I just cut some wood by hand. I had some of these slivers that I cut off when I built the benches in the shop. And I've hung on to them, so I just uh, used them as shims and glued a, uh, a vacuum sealed square on the bottom. These are actually just supports on the edges. And then I took some vinyl tape and I put tape on that edge right there to act as a gasket. I was gonna put a bottom plate on here, but I don't really think it's necessary because I got this aluminum plate on the bottom here. So I figured I would just use the aluminum plate because I clamped this on there anyway and remove it and do stuff like that. Now, what I did is I took the vacuum fitting. That's this one right here. This is the vacuum fitting for the vacuum that's right there. All right, so this is what it looks like. And basically, it has a diameter, an opening, of a certain size, okay? That certain size is what I used to do the math for the holes. So the holes were supposed to be uh, less than one millimeter, and I calculated, like, just over 400 holes would be the same size as what is in this square area right there. A little over 400 square millimeters. It's actually like 460, and I sized it down a little bit. But then when I decided, when I was looking at this, I decided maybe I should actually put holes every um, point, let's see, every five millimeter. So I did 40 holes by 40 holes, and this is a uh, 20 by 20, or 200 by 200 millimeter square. And the reason I did that is because the majority of these holes are gonna be sealed, and there's only gonna be a few on the side that are not sealed. So I may even need to open up you know, when I put a vacuum um, fitting on here, I'm basically just going to 3D print something that I can slide in there that seals nice. That'll have a hose around this diameter that goes up to the vacuum cleaner, just like that hose. That hose is very small on there. I wanted it small to get down to the vacuum. Really, I need a bigger one to get full suction out of it. So uh, I decided to engineer this one basically the same size as this. So I'm going to clean this thing up and I'm going to clamp it on there like I always do and hopefully it seals nicely. Um, I think it should. And yeah, then I'll go ahead and make some vacuum fittings and uh, 
see how she runs on the small vacuum. I tested it on the bigger vacuum and it works really well, so we'll see how it works on the small one. Alright, so I had a tiny hole right here, which I could probably put like a vacuum sensor in there if I wanted to get real tricky and have an automatic valve or something crazy, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so I marked this to be originally right here where it used to be before I took this thing apart. Let's see, I guess it's the top now instead of there. Because I have markings on my pieces of wood. Oh man, now these clips are... Darn, these clips are too tall now. I'm going to have to use something else. Well, I'll use a... Uh, I'll find me a different style clip, but... Yeah, that just gets... Uh, just clamped on there. One on each corner. To hold it in place and that... Um, I can actually feel... I can move the whole thing because the vinyl is actually sticking. And my vacuum port is right here. I'll just make a little hose that goes down there and the vacuum's here and ready to go all the time. So, sweet. I think it's going to work. Okay, well then. It's been a little while. It's kind of dark in here. It's kind of funny. I got a light back here and a little light up there, so I'm a little dark, but whatever. Anyway, I have printed these two vacuum fittings, and I got this hose. This is, I actually have no idea what this hose is. I got it at uh, Lowe's Home Depot. I think Home Depot. No, at Lowe's. I don't even know what it is, but it just happened to be pretty well the same diameter as what's on a standard vacuum. Um, so I grabbed it, and uh, it just happens to work. So I printed this little 3D printed part. Okay, and it fits inside of the bed. And then this funky looking shape, which I don't know why they designed it this way. But they did. This uh, vacuum cleaner here has that. So this hose fits right in here. I can probably put some, uh, well actually on this side I put a little bit of a Teflon tape to seal up any of the edges. I could probably do the same for that one, but I haven't done that yet. This one goes up here, it fits real nice. Now I can use this vacuum. So that vacuum doesn't really suck. It's supposed to suck, right? Vacuums should suck, but this one doesn't suck as good as the big one I've got down here on the floor. So I've been testing with both of them. But it does work. You can hear it. So it is sucking. So I haven't fully tested this yet because I'm still working on designing a different tool end for the actual uh, coil winder itself. Okay, so I haven't quite gotten there. But I'm going to show you a close up real quick, turn this light on, show you a close up of kind of what this looks like when I have nothing and then when I have the vacuum attached. So I got some close ups of the big vacuum with the paper and I'll show you those as well. So I'm going to turn the back on, you can see what happens. So I'm going to push it in the middle. It doesn't really come up, but if I touch the edges... Now, if I uncover some of the holes, You can see how it pulls up, but if I cover up the holes again, then it stays down really well. So basically what I've, what I've learned from this is that A, you need a really good vacuum. I could use a uh, compressor and a vacuum generator to generate the vacuum for this. It might be more efficient, actually. I'm not really sure. Um, however, I've got this vacuum attached on this thing, and so I might as well use it. So I'm going to be probably using it. Um, instead of the one on the floor here, which pulls a lot better of a vacuum, but still not that much more. Now that I've got this bigger hose on here, it actually works pretty good. Originally, I had a small hose, and it just wasn't working quite as nice. So, um, if I could find a sheet, a complete sheet to lay on here, instead of individual pieces of tape, then it would probably work a lot better. So, if anybody knows where I could get a sheet of tape with different kind of backings. So as you guys remember, um, I tried, you know, several different kinds of tape 
right? Here's a stack of the different types of tape I used, okay? Some really good sticky stuff, some not as good sticky stuff, some generic stuff, some regular tape, some not so tacky regular tape. This one's actually not supposed to be in this pile. But anyway, so I've done a lot of, uh, of testing with tape prior to this, and for the smaller wire, sprinklers are going up, for the smaller wire, uh, this tape seems to work better than the heavy stick tape. Uh, so, really quickly, uh, I'm going to give you an overview of my thoughts on this. Even though I haven't tested it yet, I want to get this video out there to you so you can see this vacuum bed and how I got this thing together. It actually turned out really nice. I'll pull this thing off. So, again, I've got the... Oh, my clamp is on there, I guess. There we go. I just got some bigger clamps because the other ones wouldn't fit. So I got the tape just on the back of the uh, the frame here, which holds it. But then you've got this split in the middle, which really screws things up. So if I could put like a big roll on here uh, to cover all the holes or almost all the holes, that would be really, really good. So the bottom, we've already pretty well seen this, but I'm kind of curious how the tape has been squashed. Oh yeah, it looks pretty good. See how the vacuum hose just kind of barely fits right in there. But yeah, the tape is smashed down pretty good, and uh, that turned out nice. I was hoping that the tape would smash down and seal um, between this plate, because now there's a tiny bit small position there. Wow, that, that thing is really in there. Look at that. So I've got marks on here, get it lined up, clamp it right in place, and that seems to do a pretty fair job. These are some serious clamps. Irwin clamps. Nice. I think they were three bucks. That's pretty, pretty decent. Okay, enough yakking, enough talking. I just wanted to give you guys an update on what I was trying to do here. I want to make some coils. I want to do some really fun stuff. Now, the next thing, which I do want to discuss with you, basically, um, I'm going to run into a bit of a problem here. And I'm actually going to reach out to you guys for some help. Uh, so, I may not need it, but right now I do. And so I figured I'd throw it at the end of this video in case uh, you guys can help me out. So, the tool on here, which I don't even have here, it's upstairs somewhere. I'm building a new version of it. Um, I actually am going to be adding, or I would like to add, another axis, rotational axis, which actually guides the roller in the proper direction. Now why would I want to do that? I want to do that for one main reason. I want to be able to lay the wire right down the center of the axis because right now the roller is offset. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go see my other videos. Um, I'll post, actually while I'm describing this, I'll put a piece of clip in here of one of these things running and you'll see what I mean. It's, it's a cam follower, so it's following the end of this laying the wire down. Realistically, what I want to do is turn, okay, the cam, force the, t the cam to turn. Now, there's an individual uh, running a duet board like this, actually making concrete structures with a giant concrete uh, 3D printer. And he has engineered the head to spin so that the concrete can be guided in the path. So what I want to do is I basically want to simply determine which direction the printer is headed and then turn the wheel so it's always facing the traveling direction, if that makes sense. And that's what they do on these concrete printers. I haven't got a hold of this gentleman yet. I'm going to try and see if he can help me out. But really, I want to be able to create the G-code and then run it through a script where it will write the G-code for a motor such as I could call it a U or a V or some other you know utility type of motor. And then it would automatically put the G-code in that file using a script of some kind to determine the g-code in which direction it's headed and it will just be a script file i can just run it it'll rewrite the, the g-code adding the extra g-code for the extra motor in there so that i can use any processor a pro post processor to create the g-code because in this case i'm using fusion so i want to be able to take fusion and i want to generate the g-code and then i want to be able to add in the extra axis for the direction that the head shall be traveling. Um, it's similar to a drag knife type of editing software or G-code command where the drag knife uh, in order to do corners needs to, to move and position itself in a different spot where the drag knife will miss the corner. 
I basically want to do the same thing, but I don't want to just do corners. I want to do the entire thing. I want the whole thing to always follow the direction it's going. So, if you guys know of anybody who can either A, help me write a script that can do such a thing, B, have somebody that knows somebody that can actually like do it on the fly within the duet, possibly, probably not, I need to create the GCO, probably. Um, or, if you know an addition to something, a slicer, I could not find any add-ons to Fusion 360, which is what I'm probably always going to use to make these, uh, these files. I might be able to use a few other pieces of software, so realistically, having the G-code, letting the script analyze it, and then write an extra G-code command for an extra motor for every time something changes direction would be ideal. The motor up here will be a 360 degree. Um, it really just needs to be 360. I can determine everything else I need, programming uh, that stuff into the controller so I can tell it how many steps per revolution and all those kind of things. Really, I just need to be able to control this thing in a 360 degree movement. Uh, how I'm going to do that is going to be simple. I got all that sort of in my mind. I just cannot personally write a script to do that. That is not my expertise, so I'm asking for your help to do that. Uh, I link the duet form uh, post where I'm asking for help there, and I'll we'll kind of discuss it there and see where that takes us. So anyway, I hope this was interesting. Uh, I did drill 800 holes, and to be honest, I could probably drill twice or even three times that many. Uh, if I use split tape because the holes are going to be covered up anyway so as long as the tape is strong enough so that the wire when it lays down doesn't push into that hole then it's perfectly fine so yeah off to the next phase also got to build a, uh, a wire tensioner roll turner thing on the lobber but that's for another day maybe uh, that'll probably be actually a self-contained thing because adding the g-code for that's going to be hard with different size spools and having wire different sizes and stuff so probably going to end up making some sort of a uh, a wire guide thing and a brake and a little motor that just spins that guy and just make sure that the coil always has uh, basically complete uh, looseness no tension whatsoever on the wire going down because that's what screws things up anyway it's been a little while Hopefully you remember these details. If not, please go watch my Coil Winder video. Read the Bible more. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll put some more stuff up here. It takes me a while to make these. And, uh, yeah. Wow. I've really been talking for 11 minutes. I gotta go. Bye-bye.